What up guys, Gangs Pranks here, bringing you the weekly wrestling review for February 2nd, welcome to the show. If you're new to the show, this is where we talk everything about professional wrestling, from news reviews to predictions, we talk about it all. So if you're a fan of professional wrestling, welcome to the show. On today's show we got reviews for the Royal Rumble, uh, Raw Roulette, NXT, Impact from England, Smackdown, Ring of Honor, and a little bit of wrestling news. So let's jump right into it. Uh, first we got the Royal Rumble. Now, the Royal Rumble was a good show. I, I enjoyed it. Royal Rumble is my favorite pay-per-view uh, probably of all time. Uh, WrestleMania is a close second, but I definitely got to go with um, with the Royal Rumble. It's just so exciting. The Royal Rumble match itself is just like, who's going to appear? And there were some um, surprises in this Royal Rumble, uh, which we will talk about in a second. So, um, yeah, let's just jump right into the show. Uh, first match, Del Rio taking on Big Show. Last man standing match for the world title. Good match, Del Rio wins. Um, the ending was alright. You had Big Show in an armbar by Del Rio. And Ricardo Rodriguez taped Big Show's feet to the bottom of the rope. And um, Big Show couldn't untie his feet, so he got counted out. Eh, it was an okay finish. Um, I didn't care for it too much. I would have preferred, you know... Get him out legit for the 10 count, but you know, cheat to win, whatever. Um, so yeah, it was a good match, but the ending was just meh. Uh, next, we got Team Hell No taking on Road Scholars for the tag team titles. Pretty good match. Uh, team Hell No wins. We'll be talking a little bit more about Road Scholars later on, but yeah, this was just like a regular, it was like a match from Raw, like to be honest. It was just a regular match, nothing really special. Um, next we got something I wasn't a big fan of was the Royal Rumble match. Personally, I like the Royal Rumble main eventing the the Royal Rumble pay-per-view. But in this case, with it being such a big match, I was fine with it. So, um, we have the Royal Rumble, second to last match. Uh, it was really good. Um, we'll talk about the winner in a second. So, uh, let's just talk about all the crazy stuff that happened in the match. Uh, Dolph Ziggler was number one. And, uh, you know, he came out, cut a promo, talks about he's going to win it, being number one. And then number two was the return of Chris Jericho. Uh, Chris Jericho, one of three returns at the uh, the Royal Rumble, which we'll talk about in a second, the other two. And, um, you know, these two, they lasted all the way till the final 30, yeah, the final uh, six guys. And uh, we'll talk about that later on in a second. Um... Who, what else? Uh, Goldust and Godfather were the other, the other surprise entrance. Uh, I hated Godfather. Like, he came in, was there for like two seconds. I forgot who dropped, oh, was Ziggler. So, Godfather got in, made his entrance. You know, he's coming down, ho, oh, train, the music's playing. He's got hoes on his arms. And he walks out, gets in the rumble, immediately drop kicked out by Ziggler. I'm like, really? What a waste of an entrance. I would have liked to see him do something. I don't care if he's eliminated, like, in a minute. But not two seconds, like, in and out. Like, let him do something. It was just, he got thrown out and fucking walked back with the hose. It was prop. He made good money that night, and it was for no work at all. So, <laughs> big ups to the Godfather. Um, on the other hand, Goldust was in there. He, you know, throughout the whole uh, Royal Rumble, it was him and Cody. Uh, it seems like they're building towards a match between um, between the two at WrestleMania, and that's uh, further evidence by uh, the breakup of Road Scholars. So now they're both uh, singles wrestlers. Tag team's done. Ah, I'm not a big fan of that because I like them as a team. I would have liked to see them with a little tag team title run, but. Um, I like Hell No too much, so that's whatever. Uh, what else happened in the Rumble? Oh, Kofi Kingston, you know, he's got to do a big spot every year. First the handstand, now this year. So he got thrown out, so Tenzai got eliminated, and then Kofi got thrown out. But he jumped on Tenzai's back, and then got on the announce table. Uh, JBL gives him his chair, and he bunny hops all the way back to the ring. Only to get eliminated like two seconds later, but uh, that's whatever. Um, what else? Um, one thing I didn't like too much was, um, so Bo Dallas was in there. You know, he won a spot from NXT, some NXT Rumble Battle Royale thing at the Access show. And, um, 
he lasted way too long. He lasted over 20 minutes. It's like, what the fuck? You're telling me this rookie can last with these fucking, like, professional wrestlers? That's fucking horseshit. He should not have lasted 20 minutes. Fuck no. That's ridiculous. That is stupid. Um, yeah, that's just, I fucking hated that. I'm like, how is he still in there? Like, he's a rookie. He should get thrown out immediately. Well, not immediately, but like five minutes, seven minutes. You know, just like uh, like a baby face. You know, he's almost eliminated. Uh, it's, he uh, way too long. Twenty minutes is way too long. And then he eliminates Wade Barrett, and uh, Barrett gets pissed and eliminates him. So there's li- it's building towards a feud. We'll talk about that more on Raw and SmackDown. And um, yeah, way too long for Bo Dallas. Way too fucking long. And, um, the final four were Sheamus, Ziggler, Ryback, and Cena. You have Sheamus eliminated Ziggler, which I was not a fan of. I would have liked to see seen Ziggler eliminate Sheamus. Cena eliminate, uh, Ziggler. And then Ryback and Cena is the final two. But, uh, they had Sheamus eliminate Ziggler. And then Sheamus gets eliminated by Ryback. And then the final two were Cena and Ryback. And, of course, Cena won. And he will go on to WrestleMania to main event it. Who he will face, we'll talk about on Raw as well. Um, and last but not least, the Rock vs. CM Punk WWE title match. A really good match. It was really good. Um, Punk wins, but but he wins. And then the, after the lights go out and the Rock gets taken out and uh, Punk pins him, Vince McMahon comes out and he says he's going to strip Punk of the title, but Rock says to restart the match instead. So they restarted it, Rock wins, and is the new WWE Champion. I wish they would have had a clean finish, like not get the shield involved, but it built into the storyline um, later on. So, um, my guy just popped up, give me a second here. God damn it, I can't find the K button. All right, sweet. No more interruptions. Um, so yeah, I I would have preferred a like just a straight finish, but um, it built into the angle on Raw, so I guess that's fine. But I would have liked to just seen Rock beat Punk just clean. But um, that's whatever. Anyways, overall it was a good show. I enjoyed it. Uh, Royal Rumble match was fun. It wasn't a good. It was a good Rumble. One, not one of the best, but yeah, it's definitely up there as a good show. Um, so yeah, I say I recommend getting the show, and uh, if you don't want to get it, at least get it for the last two matches, uh, the Royal Rumble and Rock vs. Punk. Those were worth it. So uh, that was the Rumble. Next we got Raw. This was the Raw Roulette show. And um, it starts with CM Punk. You know, he's mad about he, him losing to The Rock and says Vince screwed him. Uh, Vince comes out and says someone will give, someone gave him video evidence that proves that the Shield and Punk were working together. Um, that was the main event segment, so we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, next we got Orton and Cesaro with special guest referee match. Uh, good match. Orton wins. Uh, Miz was a special guest referee, so he kind of screwed Cesaro there. And uh, yeah, good way to start up the show. Orton won. Now one thing I want to talk about. Now, I hate this. Um, sometimes I will check out a show. I'll look at the results and see what people had to say. And people said this was an awful show. And I went in with the mentality that, like, this is going to be an awful show. And it did have its parts where it was bad. But it also had some good parts, which we'll talk about. There wasn't many, but we'll talk about them. <laughs> so, um... Next, uh, we got Ryback versus the Primetime Players in a Make Me Laugh match. Personally, I think the Primetime Players won by making fun of Matt Stryker, because that's always fun. But uh, Ryback wasn't in a funny mood, and he just beat everybody up, including Matt Stryker. Uh, Next, we got Wade Barrett. He got to pick his own opponent. He picked Bo Dallas. Uh, Okay match. Bo wins. He stole the victory off Wade Barrett. So, again, they're building toward the feud between these two, which... That's uh, whatever, I guess. I would have preferred uh, Richie Steamboat because they kind of had that thing a couple weeks ago with Ricky Steamboat, but 
throw that out the window. Um, next we got Cody Rhodes versus John Cena. Okay match. Cena wins. This was very short. Uh, after the match, Cena says he'll challenge the WWE Champion at WrestleMania. So it's either going to be Punk or Rock. Uh, whoever wins at the Elimination Chamber. Uh, the Shield comes out, attacks Cena. Sheamus comes out, tries to make the save. He gets taken out as well. Ryback, same thing. Tries to make the save. But he gets murdered. He doesn't get murdered. He gets taken out as well. Um, next we got Brodus Clay versus Tenzai. Uh, originally a lingerie pillow fight, but uh, it turned into a dance-off. But Tenzai didn't get that message. He was dressed in lingerie. And, um, oh, how bad I wanted to see a lingerie pillow fight between these two. But, you know, whatever. We got to dance off instead. Uh, anyways, Tenzai is, um, he should have won. Because, you know, he used to team up with Scotty Too Hotty, And I'm pretty sure... Scotty taught him some dance moves, so I think he should have won. Um, Ron Simmons appeared, said, damn, this is one of the bad things <laughs> on the show. Um, Tenzai is definitely not a monster anymore. Um, that is done and over with. He's probably going to go back to, like, um, what I just talked about. Like the, It seemed like they were building towards like a tag team between the two, which it's whatever. I could see Tenzai turning on Brodus and then having a feud between the, those two, but yeah, Tenzai's not a monster anymore. He's probably going to be the same role that he played with Scotty, just that dancing, goofy guy. So, uh, it's whatever. <laughs> he had a good run. He had a good, like, two weeks as champion. You know, or not champion. He, he had a couple of good weeks. Like, he came in, um, squashed somebody, and then the next week he faced... Uh, uh, Cena in like the main event of Raw and then it all went downhill from there you know they changed his name not Lord Tenzai anymore uh, he changed his finisher because he was hurting people with it or some shit like that so it's just not been a good ex return back to WWE for Tenzai but whatever um, next we got Alberto Del Rio taking out Big Show in a body slam challenge uh, match never happened show knocks out Del Rio Tapes him up to the ropes and then beats the shit out of Ricardo Rodriguez. The end. Um, next, we got another <laughs> terrible <laughs> part of the show. Um, Caitlyn versus Tamina in a Las Vegas Showgirl Lumberjill match. Uh, it was a blah match, as expected. Um, no one wins after all the Lumberjills get in the ring and have a huge brawl. Um, one of the best things that was, there was something good about this was Tamina's face. It was just like. God, this sucks. <laughs> like, her face is just sheer disappointment. I don't know if she thought it was going to be good, and then it just turned out horrible. Or she knew it was going to be horrible, and just... Her expression was priceless. Um, next, we got The Rock comes out and celebrates being WWE Champion. Uh, Punk comes out and tells The Rock to give him his belt back. Uh, Punk tell, or Rock tells Punk to come get it. Punk backs off and challenges uh, The Rock at an elimination chamber. Hopefully, they'll have a more clean, decisive finish. Now, I've been thinking about this the past couple days. Um, well, not ever since I watched Raw. I'm like, you know, they have Cena, and or they're probably going to do Cena in The Rock at WrestleMania Part Two, even though it was, you know, match, match of a lifetime or whatever. Um, and then I. A three-way at WrestleMania be between these two. I think that would be awesome. You know what I'm saying? I would love to see a three-way between uh, Cena, Rock, and Punk. But that's just me. Maybe have... Hmm, how would you book this? Maybe have Punk win at Elimination Chamber. He keeps attacking Rock. Cena comes out to defend. Rock wants a rematch. Cena already has a match at WrestleMania. Bam, three-way right there. Damn, that was a snap of a finger. I just came up with that. Um, next, we got Sheamus taking on Damian Sando in a tables match. This was a good match. Sheamus won. Um, next, we got another terrible part of the show. Um, Zack Ryder versus Greg Holly in a karaoke match. Sadly, this was interrupted by 3MB. You know, it was going so well. And then um, 3MB came out. Uh, 3MB say they're real musicians and then get beat up by Kali and Ryder. It was awesome. Is Kali trying to sing <laughs> Shawn Michaels' music? I'm just a sexy boy, but he fucking botched it. You know, he can't speak English very well. That was kind of funny. Um, no, it's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. 
Um, what else? Next, we got Chris Jericho comes out. Says it's good to be back. Uh, Ziggler interrupts him. Says he doesn't want he doesn't work here anymore. Uh, Vicky appears and says she rehired Jericho and they will have a tag match. He spun the wheel. Um, so it turns out Jericho and Ziggler are taking on Hell No. Um, okay match. Hell No wins. It's very short. And um, yeah, it seems like they're going to build towards the feud between these two. You know, reigniting the feud that happened. You know, Ziggler, I guess he retired Jericho. I, no, he got him fired. That was about it. So they're probably going to pick up with that, which is fine. Um, next, WWE has announced their next Hall of Famer. So joining Bob Backlund and Mick Foley will be Trish Stratus, which, um, you know, I think they should have saved. I. Uh, they got to bring a WrestleMania to Canada. Like, it's got to be soon. Because it's been... This WrestleMania is going to be, what, ninth Or no, 20? And the last WrestleMania in Canada was... 18. So they, they got to bring it back to Canada. Have Trish fucking be inducted there. The end, everybody's happy. But uh, whatever, Trish is going in here. So Trish, Foley, Bob Backlund... Rumored uh, another person, Bruno Sammartino. Um, we'll see about that one because I don't think that's going to happen with the history between Vince and Bruno, but whatever. <clears throat> and the main event, Vince and Paul Heyman come out for Heyman's performance evaluation. Uh, Vince shows footage of Heyman with Brad Maddox, and Heyman talks about paying Maddox and the Shield to help him. Uh, Heyman says it wasn't him, which is kind of funny because like, it wasn't me. <laughs> that wasn't me. And uh, Vince goes to fire Heyman, but is interrupted by Brock Lesnar. Uh, Lesnar comes out and F5s Vince. So, um, yeah, I, I didn't watch Raw this week yet, but I'm going to assume Triple H comes out and um, challenges him to a match at WrestleMania. So. Uh, next we got NXT. So anyways, that Raw was pretty, is not good. Um, there's a couple highlights, a lot of low lights. So I just recommend staying away from that show. Uh, next we got NXT, you know, more progressing towards the tag team title tournament. We got Alex Rowley and Derek Bateman taking on Leo Kruger and Cassius Ono. Pretty good match, Ono and Kruger win. Uh, next we got Sakamoto taking on the returning Mason Ryan. I thought it was adorable. They had their hair done the same way. It was, it was, it was fabulous. <laughs> uh, anyways, okay match. Ryan wins. Uh, next, we got Aksana taking on Paige. This was okay. Page one. In the main event, Bo Dallas versus... Bo, Bo, ugh, Bo Dallas and Michael McGillicuddy taking on Epico and Primo. Good match. Dallas and McGillicuddy win. Uh, the ending came out of nowhere. I don't really like um, Bo Dallas' finisher. Just like... Uh, is this a belly to belly? I guess like it runs off the ropes, belly to belly, one two three. Just I'm not a fan of that. Just it's too random, you know. It's nothing like uh, like an RKO. You know when he's gonna hit it with this finisher. So like, oh, that was it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm not a big fan of that. Um, next we got Impact. So they took the show. I think they taped two shows in England, and um. Show is pretty good, so we'll talk about it. Uh, first, starts off Christopher Daniels and Kazarian dressed in kilts with a blue face paint. Um, Kazarian comes out and talks about how the Scottish are better, getting some heat. Uh, Daniels talks about losing to Hardy. <coughs> Magnus comes out and challenges them to a match, but takes them out instead. Uh, Magnus then calls out Devon to a match, so it's Devon versus Magnus. Pretty good match. Magnus wins by DQ. Uh, next, we got Joseph Park comes in and to make his his debut as an official wrestler, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, Robbie E comes out, interrupts him, leads to a match. Uh, okay match, Park wins. Um, next, we got Austin Aries and Robert Root come out and say they're going to win every title in TNA, starting with the tag titles. Um, Chavo and Hernandez come out and say they aren't even a tag team. This leads to a match between Aries and Chavo. Pretty good match. Aries wins. Uh, nice little match between these two. Uh, next, we got Bully Ray, Brooke Hogan, and Sting come out to try and get Bully reinstated. Uh, Hulk Hogan comes out, reinstates Bully, and makes a table tag team table match for next week. So it's Bully Ray and Sting versus Aces and Aces. Uh, tag table match. 
Uh, and the main event, Mr. Anderson and taking on Kurt Angle in a cage match. Good match. Angle wins after the match. An Aces and Eights member gets in the ring. Uh, Wes Briscoe gets in the cage, locks it. The Ace member pulls off his mask to reveal the identity, and it is Garrett Bischoff. Then Wes reveals he is a part of Aces and Eights 2, and they attack Angle. Congratulations. More shit that doesn't make sense or people don't care about TNA. Good job. Aces and eights. I don't give a shit. Either them and the shield. I just. The interest level has just. It started high and then it just tanked like a fucking rock in water. Just. Glug, glug, sunk to the bottom of the ocean. It's terrible. Like. I, whatever. That's just me though. Some people might like it. Um, other than that, it was a pretty good show. I enjoyed it. Uh, I can't wait to see their next show in England because I heard it was pretty good. Uh, next, we got SmackDown. It starts out with Booker is in the ring with Kali, Orton, Hell No, Sheamus, and Ziggler. He says these six men will compete in the Elimination Chamber, or their top prospects because they're former world champions. Uh, Jack Swagger comes out and says he deserves to be in the match. <laughs> uh, Ziggler says he doesn't need to be in the match because he has the money in the bank. And Booker T says everyone has a match tonight. One thing I want to talk about. So let's talk about the Elimination Chamber right now. So confirmed matches I believe are The Rock and Punk for the WWE title. I think there's a six man between Sheamus, Ryback, Cena, and The Shield. And then you have the SmackDown Elimination Chamber to determine a number one contender for Del Rio at WrestleMania. So you're naming this pay-per-view... Elimination Chamber, and you only have one Elimination Chamber match? What the fuck? I hope to God that six-man tag is an Elimination Chamber. Like they have in the fucking, um, in WWE 13. They've had this match forever. They have this uh, six-man tag uh, Elimination Chamber match. So, you know, one member of each team starts, and then randomly throw in uh, another member of which team, whatever team, and, um, yeah, I hope they do it like that. I hope that is an Elimination Chamber match, but, uh, probably not. And, uh, yeah, I just think it's stupid. Um, one Elimination Chamber match in the show, and you have Kali in it? Fuck that. Fuck that. That is terrible. Um, same thing with Hell in a Cell. I believe Hell in a Cell only had one Hell in a Cell match. And you name their whole pay-per-view Hell in a Cell. You can't do that shit. You gotta have more than one fucking Hell in a Cell match. Can't name a whole fucking pay-per-view after it and then just do one thing. Like, lockdown, all steel cage pay-per-view. I know that. But, what, I just think it's so fucking dumb. They might have announced more Elimination Chambers. Like, the one I just talked about, the ryback Sheamus cena shield match. I hope to God, because that might save this pay-per-view. Um, what else? And Jack Swagger coming out saying he deserves to be in the match because he's a former world champion. Um... Yeah, no, like, you haven't been in action in so many months, and before that you were fucking losing to everybody, so. And he just thinks he deserves a world title match. Whatever, probably gonna give it to him. Um, next we got Hell No, taking on Rey Mysterio and Sin Cara. Pretty good match, Mysterio and Sin Cara win. Uh, next we got Great Khali taking on Jinder Mahal, blah match, Khali wins. Uh, Sheamus, ver Sheamus versus Damian Sando, pretty good match. No one wins after the Shield comes out and takes out Sheamus. There just seems to be a recurring, like, recycled matches. I'm going to talk about this in a second, actually. So next you got Wade Barrett versus Randy Orton. Pretty good match. Orton wins. After the match, Barrett attacks Bo Dallas backstage, furthering the storyline. So back to the comment I just made, how it seems like they're just fucking recycling the same fucking match. It seems like it's always Randy Orton versus Wade Barrett on Raw. Now, it wasn't on this Raw. It was Antonio Cesaro. But Antonio Cesaro is starting to turn into that other person. Um, like, if they're not wrestling on Raw, they're wrestling on SmackDown. Orton and Barrett. Just every fucking week, they're having at least one match. I can't wait to see Raw and SmackDown this week so they can wrestle again. And if they're not doing it there, they're probably doing it on main events or whatever fucking shows. Sunday, Saturday morning slam. However many shows they have. Like, just ridiculous. Um... And same thing, Sheamus vs. Sando. This match happens a lot as well. So now Let's get some other people. Let's build some depth in this fucking roster. Uh, next we got Kofi Kingston vs. Jack Swagger. Pretty good match. Swagger wins. 
Uh, throughout the night, Del Rio was waiting for Big Show in the parking lot. Uh, Show finally shows up and Del Rio attacks him. You know the song, they dance around the Mexican hat? They dance, they dance around the Mexican hat? Yeah, well, they danced around the Mexican car, and um, it was pretty ridiculous. Eventually, Big Show got away. Uh, in, in the main event, Del Rio taking on Ziggler. Good match, Del Rio wins after the match. Show appears on the Titan Tron with Ricardo Rodriguez and knocks him out. Um, next, we got Ring of Honor. It starts out with Nigel McGuinness is in the ring. He brings out Jay Lethal and Kevin Steen. Uh, Lethal cuts a good promo talking about how Steen is a d disgrace as a champion and how he wants to destroy Ring of Honor. Uh, Carino chimes in and talks about Lethal's mom. Uh, it ends with Steen accepting a match to take on Lethal. One thing I don't like about this feud is just the inconsistency with Jay Lethal. Uh, you know, he's a face with when Steen spit in his mom's face, and then he turned into a heel, and now he's a face again? Like, was he a face that lost control? He can't be a face that lost control because he did heel things. Yeah, he's, I don't know, they're flip-flopping on him. Anyways, they're going to have a match at the next Ring of Honor pay-per-view, which is the first week of March, I believe, the 11th anniversary of Ring of Honor. Uh, Lethal versus Steen. I'm excited. I'm going to put my money on Lethal on this one. Just, uh, I think he might take it. I think they're going to push him as a main guy, and he's going to be champion. Uh, next, we got Silas Young taking on Adam Page. Pretty good match. Silas wins. Uh, next, we got Charlie Haas who comes out and cuts a heel good, a good heel promo, shitting on the fans, and the fans start chucking everything into the ring. Uh, Haas calls out a guy at ringside and makes fun of him. The guy says he's training to be a wrestler, so Haas challenges him to a match. Uh, Haas beats him up and taunts the crowd. Now, if you're not subscribed to the Ring of Honor YouTube channel, um, you will be missing these gems because every day. Ring, uh, Ring of Honor releases a video of Charlie Haas and he talks about what he doesn't like and they're pretty good they're pretty good they're short they're like 10 second videos he's like I hate you know wet paper towels or some shit it's just random as fuck anyways uh, it looks like they might be pushing Haas as a singles competitor which I don't know how I feel about I prefer him as a tag team but um you know, the crowd fucking hated him. They were tossing shit in the ring. And, yeah, they fucking wanted to murder him. Um, and especially with Sh Sheldon Benjamin rumored to be coming to WWE. He was actually rumor uh, that he was supposed to be in the Royal Rumble. But um, they put in Bo Dallas instead of Shelton. Which, uh, big mistake. I'd rather have Shelton in there than Bo Dallas any fucking day. And then build a fucking Sheldon Benjamin Wade Bear feud. God damn it, WWE. It's not this fucking hard. It's not. I just fucking did your job for like three months. Build that feud. And then give Shelton the IC title. Bam. Money. Uh, next we got Matt Hardy taking on Red Titus. Pretty good match. Hardy wins. In the main event, Adam Cole taking on BJ Whitmer. TV title match. Pretty good match. Cole wins. And uh, that's it. If you want to watch Ring of Honor, all you have to do is sign up for a free account on their website, rohwrestling.com. And you can watch a show every Thursday. And, um, yeah, good hour of wrestling. And I recommend it. Next, we've got some wrestling news. First, TNA has released Kid Cash. Uh, not surprising here. I wish they would have done more between the tag team of Gunner and Kid Cash. I think I think that would have been a good tag team, in my opinion. I think that would have been the solid heel tag team, especially for a fucking division. Excuse me. A division that barely exists. There's two fucking teams. And one that's barely a team. And that's fucking Aries and Rude. Just fucking make them a tag team. Like, shit. <laughs> Hold on, what are we talking about? Oh, Kid Cash and Gunner. Yeah, I totally blanked out there for a second. So, I they should have fucking had Kid Cash and Gunner. Fucking, I think that would have been really good. But, whatever. That's just... Uh, next, according to PW Insider, Brock Lesnar has signed a new two-year deal with WWE that we will see Lesnar remain under contract with the company through WrestleMania 31. So, uh, if you thought Brock Lesnar was going anywhere, he's not. He's just going to stay at WWE. Hopefully, he has some more meaningful feuds, you know? Maybe elevate somebody else, like a young guy, instead of, you know, feuding with Triple H. You know, someone who's already established feud with... Uh, Feud with a Kofi Kingston or something, you know, help 
bring him up. And um, anyways, just let's talk about someone that is leaving. That was just a play on words because I said Brock Lesnar not going anywhere. Anyways, TNA is going somewhere. And uh, they'll be going on the road every fucking week. So D Dixie Carter has announced that TNA will be taking Impact on the road. So the plan as of right now is to run Impact on the road for a majority of the shows. With occasional tapings taking place at the Impact Zone in Orlando. Uh, TNA will use the old WWE format of holding a live taping on a Thursday night. And then tape the next week's episode right after from the same venue. Uh, as of right now, the first Impact taping on the road will be Thursday, March 14th, from the Hoffman's Estates in Illinois at the Sears Center Arena, uh, a venue which TNA has previously worked live events. So that's good news for TNA. They got to get out of that Impact Zone. You know, I think they're taking some good steps, lowering the amount of pay-per-views, doing live shows, going on the road. Uh, you know, spread the word of TNA. Take it all around the world. Like I said, you know, take it to these fucking wrestling countries. Or not, rest, these wrestling states. New York, Chicago, Louisville, Canada, Toronto specifically. Um, and yeah, if they do that, I think there's money to be made there. You know, the fucking arena at in England? It's fucking like sold out. It's huge. They did a bunch of pan out shots. And it fucking filled, filled out building, and I'm, that's good to see, you know what I'm saying? So, if they can do that more often, that's, uh, that's good for TNA. Spread the word, get more people to buy pay-per-views. Now, one thing I was thinking about. Now, if TNA fucking does these four pay-per-views a month, how will they go back if they ever wanted to? Because they want to cut down on pay-per-views to make the pay-per-views more meaningful, and they were losing a lot of money running these pay-per-views so may, if TNA gets their shit together how are they gonna say hey we want to do 12 pay-per-views again and they're like 35 bucks a pop you know what I'm saying I, I always I thought about that the other day and I'm like that's gonna be kind of hard you know like to say oh we're doing 12 pay-per-views again and then yeah. anyways that was just a little thing I thought of uh, so that's it for the weekly wrestling review. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Come back next time where we got reviews for, I just think the regular shows: Raw, SmackDown, Impact, NXT, and Ring of Honor, along with some wrestling news. Hope you guys enjoyed the show, and uh, keep up with all the other videos on the channel. I'm trying to put up daily content, but I kind of fucked up yesterday. But that's whatever. Um, so I might upload another video later today, because this will go up early in the morning. Maybe I might get one out later in the afternoon, so look forward to that. Uh, so other than that, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoy the show. Come back next time. Peace out.